So what is Yara, right? Yara is a rules engine. It enables threat hunters and analysts and incident responders to create rules which identify file content. Well, it can be used for both file content, things in memory, things on the network. It really is about matching on the object content, wherever and whatever that object may be. And Yara is a language, right? It, it's a textual file and you can create a Yara rule quite simply in any kind of text editor. So the way it's formed, you just basically just say rule. So this is my rule and I can call it my rule. And then I open the brackets and say, okay, so the contents of my rule, what am I looking for? What am I trying to match? And usually how people write these rules and is they're trying to match on strings, right? They're saying, okay, string, and then the list of strings I want to find within, within any binary. So let's say something like this. So first string I want to find in the binary can be something simple. Let's say malware. Most malicious files will not tell us that they are malicious, but let's you know, use that as, a, as an example, right? And let's say there's other strings in the file as well. Let's say this is backdoor. And then let's say there's another one which says Google Chrome, right? Let's, let's say that, Chrome, right? So now we have three conditions that this YAR rule has. And quite literally, to match a file, you need to create conditions which trigger this match. And the condition would be, conditions, would be something like this. Let's say we're trying to find just the malicious files. Let's say A and B together say that this is a malware backdoor, and that's going to trigger the Yara rule, which detects something as a backdoor. But we do not want to trigger on Chrome say A and B together, right? But no C, right? So let's say not C, right? And that would be an example of a YAR rule which should match only in the cases of when the file contains A and B but not C. And I made a mistake here, and, and I did this intentionally just to show how easy it is to make mistakes in these kind of programming languages, because logical expressions, when written like this, are evaluated from left to right. So the idea of writing a good rule is you know, creating a rule and testing it. So for me to test this rule, I obviously need to have a large data set, right? And I need to be able to verify that this rule, when properly written, is effectively going to tell me that this particular file is going to be matching only on the files I want it to. So A1000, our reversing, our reversing Labs platform, is exactly that. It's a system which enables you to write these kinds of rules. It has access to a really large uh, repository of files, so you can quickly prototype the rule, like I did here, and test them in real time. So if I have written this rule, and I have did the test, I would see that this particular rule would be matching on both you know, goodware and malware, which would mean to me that I have made a mistake and I needed to fix my, my mistake by you know, adding the brackets in this particular case. So only by creating and testing the rule do we have a chance to create a good rule. And when we're detecting malware, we don't want to have false positives. That's why platforms like Reversing Labs A1000 uh, help the analysts create these rules and test them before they push into the production. So writing good YAR rules is really, really difficult. And, and granted, this is not a good example. So in the real world, you really do not want to be writing rules which are just plain strings. Uh, the reason for that is, well, a lot of things can write have written in them, you know, word malware and backdoor and Chrome, and they don't necessarily have to do any, to have anything to do with the actual intent of our rule being malicious. So writing good rules uh, for us is creating rules which match contextually, which match on the code. So this would look something like this instead of saying malware, it would say, say like a byte pattern, right? So something like this, uh, which ultimately represents the code of the application. And not necessarily just the code of the application. It would be significant where this code 
is located would also be significant. So let's say this is at the entry point of an application. So that is a significantly better signature when compared to just having strings when it comes to detecting malicious content. So having large enough patterns which cover majority of the code or the functionality of the malware family is what a good YAR rule would ultimately be. Uh, these are the types of rules we at Reversing Ops write and we've written hundreds of these rules already. Uh, so what we're gonna be doing next throughout this year is we're gonna slowly start open sourcing these rules so others uh, have a chance to look at how we write them and hopefully to improve the overall quality of the rules which are floating out there in the community. So our focus is uh, byte patterns, our focus is uh, specific malware families and majority of the rules we have written are targeting those malware types which hurt the most. So as we start open sourcing our rules, you'll see uh, hundreds of detections for ransomware families and these rules effectively help the defenders protect the environment. So the idea behind us creating the rules is having a good place to actually deploy them. The rules, if they detect code of the ransomware family should be deployed at the places where code can actually execute. And in these cases, there are many different points where that, that can happen. For us, you know, we can see files coming in from the network, we can see the email traffic, we can see the storage, but the majority of those files are gonna end up being packed. So the reason why uh, people would wanna use a technology which does unpacking is that it uh, enhances the capability of Yara to detect these kinds of malicious code because they're gonna be matching on unpacked content as well. And there, since this pattern is long enough to not yield any false positives, we'll be sure that the detections are true. And when we say something is that particular ransomware family, indeed, it is going to be that. So these high quality signatures need to be deployed in an environment which either does unpacking, such as reversing labs, or they can be deployed with the dynamic analysis solutions as well. But for them, the detections will happen while the analysis is taking place. So while the example is running, these byte patterns are gonna appear in memory and you're gonna have yet another way to detect ransomware as well.